Brian here, Specialist Internist. Thank you so much for joining me once more. I am so excited to be introducing a new series of talks. I entitled it the Physician Examination Series. Now, oftentimes, you know, we've got to prepare ourselves for clinical exams, you know, be it at undergrad level, be it at postgrad level, be it at diploma examination, be it a fellowship examination. So even though we know the signs and symptoms and the various nuances to particular conditions, how to structure it and to put it together such that we are slick and don't miss any specific entity is always a challenge. Right? So I put together these series of lectures, which gives us a structural framework of thinking through physical examination of particular diagnoses. If you haven't yet subscribed to my channel, what are you waiting for? Okay, so we're going to be kicking off with acromegaly today. So we know acromegaly is due to the increased elaboration of growth hormone by the anterior pituitary, often in the setting of a pituitary adenoma. Sometimes you have just acromegaly, sometimes you have production of prolactin with growth hormone, so-called somatomammotropinoma. <clears throat> and remember that you can also probably have mass effect coming from this. You may also have a degree of hypopituitarism because of compression of the rest of the uh, pituitary by the enlarging mass. But anyway, how do we approach this guy? So first up, let me just get my point in there. Okay, so first up, you want to introduce yourself, position the patient appropriately, obtain adequate exposure. Then you just step back and look at the gestalt of the case, right? Uh, overall appearance, does the patient look like they have acromegalic faces, and we'll talk about that. You can look at the hands, and are they spade-like, spatulate fingers? Is there a positive tunnel sign, which indicates that mm, there could be carpal tunnel syndrome? <clears throat> look for thinner wasting, for weak opponents, and very sweaty, fleshy palms. You don't want to get hit by those palms. <laughs> okay, the next up, you work your way up. <clears throat> Right, checking the blood pressure, check for hypertension, check for a palpable ulnar nerve. Yes, acromegaly is a cause for thickened nerves. Check that supraclavicular nerve. Then you work your way up to the axilla. You check for proximal myopathy. Look at the axilla for fibromata, mollusca, and for acanthosis nidicat, which happens in the setting of insulin resistance, but also happens with malignancies, right? Work your way up to the face, looking for a hypophysectomy scar. Check for thick lips and prominent nasolabial folds. For seborrhea, for acne, hirsutism, a prominent brow, for underbite, <laughs> white space teeth, and for macroglossia. We will be working with the fundus. Here we're looking for optic atrophy and papillary edema, for retinopathy on the background of diabetic or hypertensive pathology, right? Angioid streaks, bitemporal hemianopia, which is the classic visual field cut you get in the setting of uh, an enlarging pituitary mass, right? Ophthalmoplegia as well. Listen to the patient speak. Right? Do they have a deep or high-pitched voice, which could be the case if they are hypogonadal. And the neck, you're also looking for a mass, which could indicate a parathyroid tumor. Remember that um, pituitary adenomas keep company with the men's and especially to, you know, multiple endocrine neoplasia type 1, which entails the three Ps, pituitary, parathyroid, and pancreatic. Okay, look for the goiter. Working me down to the precordium, looking for gynecomastia, for galacteria, is there cardiomegaly? Are there signs of heart failure? Is a third or a fourth heart sound present? Kyphosis. Work away to the abdomen. Do they, uh, does the patient have hepatospinomegaly on account of um, organ enlargement as a response to IGF-1? And palpable kidneys, is there testicular atrophy? In the lower limbs, is there proximal myopathy? Palpable peroneal nerve with foot drop and an osteoarthritis of the knee or hip? Uh, and they so-called hung up ankle jerks, which is the key to thinking about hypothyroidism, right? Large feet with thick heels is the glycosidia emotional liability. So within this, guys, you have a framework of thinking through how to examine vacromegaly so that you're not going to miss any particular sign. This is another way of representing it. So here we have... Um, <clears throat> Transfrontal scar, we have frontal bossing, bitemporal hemianopia, we said it's a classic visual field cut. You get with an enlarged pituitary mass, papilledema, angioid streaks, prognathism, and large tongue, molluscum fibrosum, proximal weakness, both uh, a pelvic and pectoral girdle, uh, pectoral girdle, and spade like hands, right? A couple of questions. What are indicators of disease activity in acromegaly? Hmm. So you've got to look at the severity of the severia. 
the sweating and the skin tags, hypertension and edema, and glucose intolerance. Those three, if they are severe, it speaks to markedly increased disease activity. Also, when you do your serial measures of the visual fields, typical cut is the bitemporal hemianopia. Is it getting worse? Look at the visual acuity. Is it getting worse? Also, you can look at the plasma incident like growth factor 1, the IGF-1 level. Okay, <clears throat> one of the common causes of morbidity and mortality in acromegaly. Hmm. Diabetes is the killer. I'm because of many things. Micro and macrovascular sequelae on account of diabetes. Sleep apnea and the resultant pulmonary hypertension. Hypertension itself. Cardiomyopathy, cerebrovascular disease. Don't forget colonic polyps. There's an association between acromegaly, colonic polyposis, and carcinoma. Right. Uh, interestingly, if your patient with acromegaly presents with paraparesis, you got to think about a colonic polyp, which is a bowel carcinoma, which is now metastasized through to the spine and is causing neurological impingement. Mechanisms of polydipsia and acromegaly, well, there could be dehydration secondary to the hyperhidrosis. There could be an osmotic diuresis, right, due to glucose intolerance, right? There could be diabetes insipidus. What are the mechanisms of galacteria and acromegaly? Well, there could be concomitant adenomatous secretion of prolactin in 30%, something we call the somatomammal tropinoma. There could be compression of the pituitary stalk by the adenoma, causing reduced ingress of prolactin inhibitory factor, which is dopamine, right, and reduced pituitary TSH secretion, causing a compensatory elevation of hypothalamic TRH secretion, hence driving prolactin release. Okay, my friends, this is what I encourage you with the scripture, the book of Hebrews, chapter 9, verse 28. This is the New International Version. It tells us, so Christ was sacrificed once to take away the sins of many people, and he will appear a second time not to bear sin, but to bring salvation to those who are waiting for him. Indeed, <clears throat> Jesus Christ was crucified, and through him we are forgiven of sins and are born into eternal life. The Bible says that there is no other name given under heaven by which men are saved except in the name of Jesus. And Jesus Christ is coming back again for those who are explicitly waiting for him. Jesus Christ is coming back for his church. And I pray that we will always be in a state of readiness. All right. Thank you so much, guys. Hope you enjoyed this video. I'll see you soon with another physical examination approach. Take care.